and today we'll be counting down the top 20 video games of all time. Immerse yourself in an epic journey in a world at war. Because we're revealing the best games of all time. S tier, A tier, B tier, C tier, there ain't no D tier. If you're that bad, you go straight to F. Keep in mind, this list is 100% objective fact and cannot be argued with. The argument of which game is the best of all time is pretty eternal. It's also pretty dumb. A game's appeal should pretty obviously be a very subjective thing. Trying to rate all games, not even separating them by genre, in an objective list is incredibly pointless. The truth is that no list can be truly objectively correct unless it itself is a very specific list. Like, the most influential games in the genre of a mute with inexplicable gun skill running around an office block. Ah, fuck. What makes a game good varies so incredibly much from person to person. Games that are widely considered to be quality experiences largely have something in common. For the most part, they have low skill floors. A skill floor and a skill ceiling are two concepts that go hand in hand. A game's skill floor is basically representing how much effort you need to put in before you can play a game at a basic level. In Apex, it's pretty simple. You press W to make your guy go forward, and you shoot things. In something like Dawn of War, uh, oh, oh yeah, you're, you're gonna need to do some homework before you can play this one. A high skill ceiling, on the other hand, is essentially having a lot of depth. You would have mechanics that are very in-depth and can be improved upon to exceptionally sweaty levels. Notably to me, it must have a wealth of individual in-depth mechanics, and as such, something like Apex does not have a super high skill ceiling, as the amount of mechanics you can improve on is limited to only a few, movement, aim, and positioning. The amount you can improve on these is immense, but you largely don't have to think about the socio-economic factors of the match you're playing like you do in League, where the amount of variables in a given match has expanded exponentially in comparison. No, oh, this, cannon this minion, a, I love you. <laughs> games have always needed to be profitable, they're a business after all. To ensure this, games are generally designed to appeal to the widest audience possible. And though this has been noticeable before this shift, as games have changed towards being more of a service model, it's become even more so over time, as developers look for ways to not only keep players engaged, but appeal to new ones who have never tried their game before. This does lead to a bit of a problem though. For a game to have wide appeal, it's bound to have a low skill floor so people stick around. This change in the industry has left entire genres just dead and gone with RTS games being the big main one. The last big RTS game with sizable money behind it was StarCraft II, and we really haven't seen anything to that level since. Stormgate seems to be gunning for it though, and that's being made by... Uh, oh... Games being centered around mass appeal also means that games are getting significantly simpler. This can definitely be a good thing, as games have tended to become a lot more consumable entertainment and less archaic board games one needs to decipher using the manual. On the other hand, games getting simpler means that there are a lot of niche genres that have garnered significantly less attention. The only reason that turn-based tactics games exist to the level they do today is literally solely because Jake motherfucking Solomon, along with the rest of the other members of the Firaxis team, revived the genre. If you don't believe me, look at this review of Chaos Gate. And maybe look at the game itself, it's not exactly hiding its influence very well. He took an old design with an absolutely butt-ugly interface, cleaned it up, simplified it to be a lot more palatable to a modern audience by removing the relatively complicated time unit mechanic and inventory management, and replacing them with things that are a lot easier to understand. One or two inventory slots, two AP for everyone. It's very easy to understand from the onset, and it feels very intuitive. So why then would I say that the original Long War, a mod for this game that increases inventory slots again, massively increases the game's complexity, is my favorite game of all time? Doesn't that kind of go against what I was saying about simplification making games better? Well, this is where a problem arises. Masochists like me who would enjoy something like Long War are definitely not numerous, and so games don't get made for them. Long War itself is a mod for a 10 year old game, it's not exactly the cutting edge. The type of experience that I want to sink my teeth into, uh, doesn't 
exist. Because there's not enough masochists like me for the market to be wide enough for development on such a title to be justified by big mainstream developers. This is where cult classics come in. They're a unique type of game because they sort of imply that they're gems with a dedicated following that normal people just manage to miss out on, but that's rarely the actual case. The titles themselves tend to be in the same vein as Long War. Deep experiences with a high bar for entry that might be pretty intimidating at first, and probably doesn't appeal to most people. And before you claim that your hidden gem is actually perfect, please just imagine your average TF2 player being sat in front of Dwarf Fortress, and just think about how much they would enjoy it. It's not like these people are wrong or anything, it's just not for them. Remember the concepts of skill floor and skill ceiling from earlier? There's another factor that plays into those a bit, short-term and long-term gratification. Quick example, compare the satisfaction of shooting a rocket at someone versus arduously setting up an ambush over the course of half an hour and then watching it all go perfectly to plan. Both are satisfying in their own way, but one is a gradual satisfaction that builds to a very enjoyable climax while the other is just kind of like biting into an advent burger. Long-term gratification is rarely seen at large in modern, popular titles, and is usually replaced with quick instant gratification. This isn't an intentional failing of the developers, it's just a side effect of the design of popular genres. Do you really think a battle royale would handle a bounty system all that well? Ugh. God damn it. Vanilla XCOM, specifically XCOM 2, suffers from a massive issue in that a lot of its short-term gratification gets massively in the way of its gameplay loop. What the f a lot of the game is built around alpha striking your enemy the second it appears, meaning killing them before they get actions. It's pixel peeking. This guy's Olaf Meister. This is because your soldiers are powerful superheroes capable enough to wipe everything off the map, and so to compensate, enemies are exceptionally fucking dangerous. This leads to a very unhealthy arms race, where the only way to make the game harder is to make enemies even more ridiculous, which forces the player to alpha strike even harder. Beagle did manage to fix this problem in Operators vs. Aliens, but... Oh, god, yeah, full video on that coming soon, maybe? Diving into OVA right now would severely delay the release of this video. Anyway, in short, he elongated fights by making both XCOM and Advent significantly less strong, and pivoted the game to be more about maneuver warfare than whatever the fuck was going on in vanilla XCOM 2. In turn, by doing this, Beagle turned XCOM 2's short-term gratification insta-wipes into fights that are a lot more gratifying long-term because they last so long. The FPS equivalent for this kind of thing would be a higher time to kill. What do you think NFG stands for? Non-fungible non gamer. gamer. <laughs> the ideal game is one with a low skill floor and high skill ceiling. Terraria is a good example. You can absolutely nerd out a build and min-max the hell out of the game, or you can go in blind and make it at the other end pretty okay. <laughs> doesn't, I, thought, I thought it would stop my fall damage because it's like bouncy, but no, it doesn't. <laughs> Unfortunately, mastering this is really goddamn hard, so most games just end up with a low skill floor and a low skill ceiling. There's nothing wrong with this, but it leaves those who are looking for a deeper, harder experience more likely to be left disappointed. <laughs> You're like working on top of a skyscraper, you just jump off. Wait, okay, one more try. It doesn't, okay. Doesn't, it doesn't, <laughs> I thought maybe I had it on before, before I started following you. It it doesn't work. Cult classics like Earthbound, Vampire, The Massacre, th this one, Alpha Protocol and the like aren't really going to be enjoyed by every single person on the planet, and they do admittedly have niche appeal to a degree. Except Republic Commando. Everyone should play this game not biased. Oh, also, Project Wingman has a button to decrease the skill floor. If that doesn't prove it's the best game of all time, I don't know what does.